Hi friends, welcome to BSPICE, Bala School for Process Instrumentation and Control Engineering. This is Ram Bala with you. In this video, we'll discuss about how to prepare data sheet for motor operated valve, that is MOE. Okay, friends? Right. So before going into the detail of it, I have few requests for you. Okay. Prior to this, I have uploaded videos on mastering PNID and how to prepare data sheet for control van. Okay. Because a lot of things you need to refer back to the PNID in this section. That's why I'm requesting. If you have not watched, please pass some time to watch those videos. And additionally, there are a lot of resemblance between the data sheet for control valve and motor operated valve. Okay. Only exception is the actuator part, which is very uh, unique uh, for the MOE. Okay, friends. I think we'll get started. Okay. So, what are all the sections we are going to cover in this video? General information, pipeline details, process conditions, valve body and trim, actuator, actuator fire proofing, limit switch, external setting tool, communication software, purchase details, and the last but not the least, special requirements. Okay, friends? Okay. And one more request. Uh, don't just consider this as only a data sheet because throughout the course in various sections, I'll be talking about various concepts and also uh, the specifications and applications related. Okay, friends, let's get started. Okay, similar to the control valve, before proceeding with the details, I just want to share the look and feel of the data sheet format. Okay, friends, okay. As usual, the general information like tag number, plant area, service, line class, area classification, leakage requirements, PNDD number, and available supply pressure. Okay, this is about the general information. Then we talk about pipeline, the line number, line size, inlet and outlet, pipe schedule, inlet and outlet, and piping material and pipe insulation, if any. And the third is process conditions. Okay, friends, this will be getting it from our process colleagues. So you don't have to worry, just only a request from them, okay? Process fluid, fluid state, design pressure, flow rate, inlet pressure, pressure drop, inlet temperature, inlet density, specific gravity, molecular mass, inlet compressibility factor, inlet viscosity, inlet specific heat ratio, inlet vapor pressure, inlet critical pressure, and sh shutoff pressure. Okay, friends, these are the parameters we need to get it from our process colleagues. Okay, friends, then we move on to the next slide. Here we talk about the very important valve body and trim. Here also a lot of resemblance between control valve and the motorized valve. Here as usual, manufacturer and model number, body type, body size, trim size, plant finish, end connection and rating, body material, bonnet type and material, low temperature service, and toxic service or emi low emission service, if anything, if applicable, then flow direction, rated travel, gland packing, and gland packing protection, type of gland packing, lubricator requirement, if any, then isolation valve, guiding and number of ports, trim type, plug ball, disc material, seat material, gauge, guide, bushing material, stem material, NASC NAS compliance if required, gasket material, stud bolt material, rated shutter pressure, cavity pressure relief construction if required, valve, required tap, fire safe design required or not, fire safe standard, 
and the body color. Okay, you just remember all these uh, you know uh, items. Uh, we'll be discussing in detail in the subsequent slides. Up, just relax and you know have a uh, watch over this video. Okay, then actuator very very important and very unique in the sense. A lot of things are unique for this motorized van. And in this only, as an engineer, we have a lot of challenges in getting it what we need. Okay. So just have a you know close watch over it. Say as usual here, manufacturer and model number, motor type, power supply, schematic detail, speed, insulation class, gear model, gear ratio. Gearbox oil filling and drain plugs, mechanical position indicator, actuator orientation, casing material, actuator color, IP rating, actuator on action on power failure, and hand wheel location, additional emergency power supply if required, phase rotation protection, phase loss protection, winding temperature and overload release, space heater requirement, full load current rating, average current and rated current, Power rating, cosine function, electrical protection on motor unit, electrical protection on control part, mounting position on the valve, electric connection on motor unit, electric connection on control unit, top switch. Okay. Some more are there. We will see in the subsequent slides. Okay. So here again, actuator nominal rate of torque, actuator peak torque, actuator maximum opening torque. Actuator coupling torque, actuator final selected torque, allowable maximum stroking time, opening time and closing time, control circuit power, whether it's internally driven or external rating, and also the padlock, selector switch, push button requirement, LCD display indication, and LED status light indication, external hardware position output, non volatile memory battery life. Key lockable transparent cover requirement, failure action, travel limit stop, remote control station, ESD command requirement, SIF process safety time, partial stroke testing requirement, required seal rating, offered seal rating, MTBF mean time between failure, PFD and MTTR mean time to repair, lifting cook requirement, etc. Okay, friends, if you look at it, uh, you know, the uh, data sheet information, particularly uh, uh, the actuator one, you can see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, unique uh, items, which is uh, uh, relevant to this, uh, what do you call uh, uh, the uh, motorized bar. Uh, whereas in the control bar, we don't have uh, such a requirement. Uh, so uh, you, you just, you know, uh, please take note of it. See, you may also ask, like, why so many information, sir? See, I have covered everything. You know, this is the uh, almost like a hundred percent. So, if we know uh, in this, if we learned all these parameters, so we are good to go. Hundred percent, you know, good to go for preparation of data sheet. Of course, in some companies, you know, uh, 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 they have just the information will be limited. For example, they will limit themselves to manufacturer model type, orientation, power supply. IP rating, hand wheel, motor type, and you know, talk switch, and also what you call the fireproofing, uh, electrical class, payload position. They just limit. But what, why I covered here most is so if we uh, learn more, so it's better actually, you know. So that's the intent actually. Okay, friends, we'll move on to the other part. Another unique uh, feature pertinent to this uh, motorized wall is a fireproofing requirement. You can say fireproofing required, yes or no, fireproofing standard design, fireproofing method, fireproofing accessories, fireproofing material, outer color, and weatherproof design. Okay, then limit switch requirement. If it is applicable, you go with this, right? Manufacturer model, type, contact, switching position, tag number, quantity, certification, IP rating, electrical connection size, housing, material, etc. Then another unique for this motorized bar, okay? Actuator part, this is the external setting tool. So we'll be seeing what is it and, you know, the look and feel everything in the subsequent slides. Don't worry, just, you know, relax and watch the video. Manufacturer model number, type, 
electrical certification, battery rating, housing material, IP rating, intrinsic safe requirement. Okay, friends? Okay. Then the final part, huh? communication software. What is the type of communication? And, uh, you know, function block, FF card, SIL module, and valve asset management software requirement, and the make, model, version, compatibility with the plant automation system, last capable, DD revision, DD revision, and ITK uh, number of friends, okay? All these things. Then finally, the purchase requirements. Okay, friends, manufacturer is not very, you know, very general information. Manufacturer model, uh, requisition number, and uh, purchase order number. Then the last but not the least, the special requirements. I have listed most of the requirements. You just say, I mean, you just see your project uh, specification and, uh, you know, fill in accordingly. Okay. For example, uh, the material certificate, positive uh, material identification, then NAS uh, hardness report, EMC uh, test report, hydrostatic test report, fire safe test certificates, electromagnetic interference type test certificate, Custom configuration, calibration test report, electrical hazardous classification certificate, cryogenic test report, fugitive emission test certificate, safety shield requirement, fireproofing test report, functional test report, third party seal certificate, failure mode effect and diagnostic analysis, functional safety manual, manufacturer nameplate and for valve and actuator, tag plate, two year spare parts, documentation and updates pre-inspection meeting, design review meeting, FAT, factory acceptance test, owner witness requirement, and last, valve seal test report. Okay, friends, these are the special requirements based on the applicability we need to keep. Okay, now we'll go into the actual. Okay, friends, the first, you know, tag number, where we can get this, of course, refer PNID and insert the tag number. Okay, plant area. Again, refer PNID and input the respective plant area description uni unique number. In this case, SEU. Okay, furnace feed and cracking heaters. So, SEU is sim cracker unit. Okay, friends. Then, service. Refer PNID and input the service description. For example, F2001 dilute steel piping. Line class and PNID number. Refer PNID for line class, that is A1A1. We have to refer the piping material class, what is A1A1, and also the PNID reference. So this is all similar to what we have uh, gone through in the control work, okay? This is not much of a challenge. We'll move on to the next slide. Then general information continued, uh, area classification. So here, this is where, you know, if you remember the uh, control valve data sheet, uh, I have explained this. Uh, for example, in refinery and uh, petrochemical plants, they generally flammable, you know, processing flammable liquids, uh, uh, fluid, sorry, okay? Hence, majority of area where instruments are located will be in zone two area classification, okay? Zone zero and one also appear in a limited location, okay? So uh, basically, uh, this is what, uh, you know, on the uh, zone, uh, um, uh, classification. So again, as a, a, re a repeat or recall, if, if you are not watched the uh, control valve, uh, you know, uh, uh, the video, I just want to recollect uh, zone zero is an area in which an explosive gas atmosphere is present continuously or for long periods of time. Okay, friends. Then zone one is an area in which an explosive gas atmosphere is likely to occur in normal operation occasionally. If you see zone zero, it's a frequently and zone one, it's only occasionally. Okay, what is zone two then? Area in which explosive gas atmosphere is not likely to occur in normal operation, but if it does occur, will persist for a short period only. So that's it about the zone classification. So now in this case, you can put, you know, of course, this has to come from our electrical colleagues or process colleagues, okay? This is based on the hazardous area classification drawing received from electrical or process. So in our case, example, what uh, we are keyed in is zone two. Okay, friends? Okay. Then what is about this 
2b so this is about gas grouping okay friends this is about gas grouping uh, for example uh, you can mention you know based on the uh, your uh, project uh, requirement okay so i put it as here 2b there is a project a gas group uh, uh, not uh, sorry there is a, a, a gas group chart and you can uh, input accordingly of course all these you will be getting it from our uh, uh, electrical uh, uh, process colleagues and also there is one more requirement temperature class okay friends so the temperature class it basically depends uh, on the uh, temperature requirement for example uh, uh, in this case i just put uh, t3 t3 means uh, 200 degrees centigrade okay friends so for example if it is 450 you need to put t1 okay 300 means t2 like that you need to refer the temperature classification uh, sheet and input accordingly. So that's the information I just want to uh, put forth, uh, friends. Uh, and uh, since we are talking about this motorized uh, actuator here, motorized valve here, so a uh, few uh, things also I just want to uh, input. Uh, okay, for example, the actuator should be a, uh, uh, the actuator should be EXD. Okay, so what is the, uh, 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 what do you call the compliance? Uh, Compliance is IEC 60079 part 1. Okay. So actuator shall be EXD actually. Right, friends? Okay. So there is also a control compartment in this, right? In the actuator. So in that case, we should specify EXI version. Okay. So in this case, overall, uh, the actuator shall have a hazardous area protection of minimum EXIB. Okay. According to IEC 60079 part 1. 11 okay and also it should be fisco certified okay friends uh, what is fisco certified field bus intrinsically safe concept okay you don't worry much about the jargons uh, followed here you just you know listen to it we'll be dealing a separate topic on absorbers area classification uh, loan and in that we will get to know all okay so don't worry, we'll proceed further. Okay, friends, then the leakage and tightness requirements. Okay, so in this, again, some notes for you. Generally, MOVs are used for on of isolation purpose and the leakage requirement should follow API 598 ASTM E499. Again, don't worry about all these codes. Okay, you just you know, get to uh, know what is what. Uh, we will be dealing again a separate topic on all classification of codes. Uh, basically, from A to Z, we will be uh, dealing with what is the uh, each code stands for and what is the application and in what way it is relevant to instrumentation. All these will be dealing with all this in progress. Okay. So, again, then in case uh, if MOV is used for a process control function. Okay. Same as a control valve. So then we need to refer the relevant project specification and select the appropriate valve leakage and input into the data sheet. Okay, friends, I think this is also clear. Okay. So we will move on. Okay. Of course, as I highlighted earlier, check with process team on the seat leakage as per FCA. 70 part 2 okay and confirm with tso okay otherwise input class 4 tso means class 5 okay again i uh, just want to uh, uh, you know uh, mindful uh, this if it is if the mov function is similar to the control function if they want to use this for process control function only this requirement okay Otherwise, just go with the API 59. Okay, friends? Clear. Okay. So, now we covered the general and now we go on to the pipeline. Again, line number, refer P and ID, pertinent to the project and input. Okay, here P62010551-6 inch and A1A1. This is piping material classification. We need to refer the piping material class and input. Okay. Then line size. Here line size, I put it as for each, you need to prefer the PN ID and input the line size and outlet. Okay, inlet and outlet, both here for each. 
Then piping schedule. Again, refer piping class from the piping team and input the same. Okay, here in this case, I put it as standard. Okay, it could be uh, schedule 80 or, you know, schedule 40 or, okay, just depends on the, you know, piping class. Okay, then piping material and insulation. Refer to the piping class from the piping team and input the material and insulation detail. Okay, friends, for example, carbon steel, CS and steam traced. If it is trim tracing requirement is there. This is about pipeline details. Okay, then process conditions. Okay, as we all know, so this has to come from our process colleagues. Okay, friends, uh, in control wall, I just covered only, you know, overall, but in this case, I'm going to cover what are the process, uh, you know, data needed. Okay, first, we need a process fluid. Example, in this case, gasoline, fluid state, it's liquid, and fluid phase, it's single phase or, you know, dual phase, you need to input it. And design pressure, minimum max, design temperature, minimum max, then flow rate, of course, inlet pressure, pressure drop, inlet temperature, inlet density, specific gravity, molecular mass, all these, you know, stuffs you need to get it from our process team, inlet compressibility factor, inlet viscosity, inlet specific heat ratio, inlet vapor pressure, inlet critical pressure, shutoff pressure. Okay, friends, these are the things we need to get it from our process colleagues. Okay, good to go. Okay. Then we come to the main part of the motorized valve. Okay. Similar to valve, control valve, here also body and trim. Again, manufacturer and model number, we need to specify. In this case, we just enter VTM. Body type, refer to the project specification. So in this case, input as valve valve, just for example. Okay. Then body size and trim size, enter again VTA, okay? Because vendor has to advise the nominal size of the body based on the calculation results. And flange finish, here also uh, enter VTA. Of course, we need to check and comply whether it, uh, you know, uh, complies to ASME B16.5, uh, B16.47, B46.1 or as per process requirements. This is very important, actually. Okay, friends, uh, I hope uh, this is uh, very clear for you. Okay, uh, yeah. Then end connection and rating. Here also, uh, we need to refer to the piping class uh, material, uh, you know, specification. Uh, and uh, yeah, for this end connection. And rating, of course, we can specify 300 RF for a normal application. And if it is high pressure, we put, uh, you know, 600 pound rating. Okay, friends. So here in this uh, body, um, I just want to, you know, um, uh, add on few uh, nodes actually. Okay. So one concept is here, valve should always be line size valves. Okay. Here, valve should always be line size valves. Okay. If you see the control valve, that's, you know, different uh, requirement. Uh, one size smaller, two size smaller, like that. Of course, we'll be seeing that in a separate video. I'm, you know, preparing a separate video on control wall design criteria, selection, all those. Uh, we'll be seeing subsequent, uh, you know, uh, upcoming videos. Don't worry. Okay. Then uh, another concept here is generally up to and including four inch ball walls. Okay. Generally up to and including four inch generally ball walls. Okay. So either reduced or full bore shall be selected. This one you just remember. Okay. Ball balls, four inch and larger shall be trunium mounted. Okay. Trunium mounted. Okay. That is one thing. And for the larger sizes, uh, for example, six inch and above, double flanged, triple offset, high performance type butterfly ball shall be selected. Okay, friends. Okay, I think this is also clear. You don't worry about what is triple offset, all this uh, will be dealing it separate section. Okay, so one thing you remember for large size, uh, six inch and above, double flanged, triple offset, high performance type butterfly valve shall be selected. Okay, there are also some exceptional cases. Uh, when full bore is demanded, meaning when full bore is the requirement, uh, then in that case, we can use bar bar. Okay, friends, 
right. Uh, then what else I can see? Yeah, again, I informed uh, while body thickness shall be as per as me 16.4 actually. Yeah, while body thickness, huh? that you should uh, uh, comply to this uh, as me be 16.34. Okay. Uh, yeah, what else? I think we have covered everything. Well, the end connection also we covered. Okay. Yeah, I just also want to see, uh, say something on this. Uh, uh, the mini, uh, the trim, uh, the trim requirement. Uh, you should also uh, focus. Uh, uh, it should be at least uh, uh, four one six type four one six or three one six SS. Uh, at least minimum. Uh, if if higher rating, we can go. If uh, process requirements, you know, is uh, uh, what do you call call for a higher rating. Okay, then. Additionally, also here, one more information I want to, you know, uh, uh, share. Well, shall we uh, have a flange connection, of course, and it shall confirm to ANSI as me B16.34. Huh? This is about valve end connection, uh, uh, friends, end connection. It should comply to ANSI or as me B16.34. Okay, friends. And of course, the face-to-face, -face, uh, uh, as I already highlighted, it should be B16 point, uh, ask me B16.5, B16.47, and B4, uh, ask me B46.1, or as per the project specification. Okay, friends, I think this is also clear. And yeah, okay, we'll move on to the next slide. Then again, body material, of course, refer to the piping class and specify. Here I put in ASTM A216 WCB carbon steel. Okay. Then bonnet type and material, specify as standard bonnet. Okay, friends. So uh, material, of course, as per the piping class. So again, carbon steel, ASTM A216 WCB. Okay. Then there are some other requirements like low temperature service, toxic service, sir and low emission service. So specify the right data based on the process inputs. For example, if it is cryogenic, we need to input as cryogenic. And of course the service, toxic means you need to put toxic, low emission means you need to put a, a low emission. Then flow direction and rated travel. This is basically uh, flow direction should come from the vendor based on the calculation, specify VTA for flow direction. And of course, rated travel, as we all know, it is zero to hundred percent. That's it. Then also there is some uh, gland packing requirement. So uh, if you remember the uh, recollect the you know the the, the concept which we uh, dealt uh, during the controller data sheet, here specify the material and uh, type packing as per the piping class. Um, for example, uh, if it is below two thirty degree, uh, we can go with uh, PTFE. That's the plan. Okay. If it is more than 230, then we prefer graphite friends. I think this is also clear for you. Okay, good to go. Then uh, body and trim section, again, gland packing and protection. Okay, so here, uh, of course, we need a gland packing protection as suppose yes, and type we can specify VTA. Okay, there is also a yeah, lubricator requirements, uh, uh, friends. Uh, so the lubricator requirement is needed, then you put yes, okay? Okay, so here in this case, uh, uh, for example, uh, I just want to, you know, add few items uh, uh, referring to the gland packing, okay? So here, uh, just listen, uh, valves in hydrogen service, uh, if it is, uh, you know, deployed for hydrogen service, so we should uh, go with the improved uh, gland packing design. What is this improved? Uh? It is life loaded. Okay, life loaded. Okay, then, um, yes, that's it. That's one of the thing I just want to highlight here. Okay, and also, uh, if you remember the previous slides, uh, I just want to add one more also. The fugitive emission uh, test certificate, that should be in line with ISO 15848 part 1, okay? Or API 622. Okay, friends, fugitive emission means you should remember ISO 
one five eight four eight part one or APA six two two. Okay, we'll move on with this other item. Guiding a number of ports, of course, they specify VTA example page or top guide. Then trim type, of course, we have to specify VTA plug uh, ball disc material as per piping class example three one six SS. Then seat material as per the piping class three one six XS hard face and or Teflon. Okay, then forty two gauge guide bushing material specify VTA. I think this is also clear, friends. Okay. We'll move on. This is a typical you know, body. Then under body and trim, again, some more items like stem material as per piping class, SS316SS and NAS compliance. Huh? Okay. This one is applicable only uh, for uh, applications such as wet H2S or so services. So what is NAS? You already know, right? National Association for Corrosion Engineers. Okay, friends. I think that is good to go. Then, um, yeah. Gasket material. Specify VTA. Graphite temperature above 230 degree. Okay. If it is below, what we have to use? Can you remember? Yeah, PTFP. Teflon. Okay, friends. Then, Stud and bolt material as per the piping class. Okay. Then rated shut off pressure, of course, VTA. Cavity pressure relief construction requirement. Okay, friends. So, what is this cavity relief pressure construction requirement? Basically, this is, you know, of course, as per the project specification. But just want to add on a few notes actually here. Basically, this is provided to relieve the trapped fluid into the internal pipeline. Okay. When the ball valve is with the fluid trapped in the body cavity. Okay, friends. Again, I repeat. So it's a relief, huh? cavity pressure relief. This is provided to relieve the trapped fluid into the internal pipeline when the ball wall is with the fluid trapped in the body cavity, okay? So if this is allowed actually, pressure of the travel fluid goes up abnormally, okay, friends? So this requirement, of course, comes from the project specification. Okay, friends, I think this is also clear. Then we'll move on to same body trims, few more top uh, items, valve, required tar. Yes, this has to come from wheat vendor and fire safe design okay if you remember again uh, during the control valve uh, discussions uh, the fire safe requirement should be in compliance to the project hsc requirements okay friends then what is the standard adopted here for the fire safe api 6fa or api 607 or iso 10497 ul 1709 above all the project specification. Just you remember only the codes. Huh? You just don't worry about anything. I will, you know, uh, 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 give a, you know, another video which uh, deals with all the codes. Huh? Okay? Okay. So here, uh, I just want to highlight few things again. Uh, since we are talking about the um, uh, fireproofing requirement, so I just want to add on few things actually. Uh, what else I can, yeah. When the valves themselves are fire safe by nature, you know, all metal, uh, all metal design, uh, in case uh, the valves are themselves uh, uh, fire safe in nature, okay, so of course it is designed to reduce the fire risk. So in that sense, in that case, we don't have to uh, necessarily fireproof them, okay, friends. So uh, if that is the case, meaning if all uh, uh, metal design and uh, uh, suited for the fire, uh, uh, you know, uh, proofing, uh, then the valve shall remain in operation for approximately 10 to 15 minutes with a temperature around 200, uh, 500 to 525 degrees centigrade. Okay, friends. However, even on the above case, uh, above case in the sense, uh, uh, fire safe by nature, okay, the actuator shall be provided with fireproofing to keep the valve operation against a 
15 to 30 minute fire exposure. Okay, this is in line, in line with UL1709. UL1709. Okay, friends, I repeat again now. There are, if the valves are fire safe by nature, okay, all metal design, uh, valve, I'm talking about the valve, uh, so it's designed to reduce the fire risk. Uh, so it's not necessary to fireproof them. Okay, friends, so in that case, uh, the valve should remain in operation approximately 10 to 15 minutes with a temperature of 500 to 525 degree C. Okay, however, but actuator to be provided is fireproofing. Okay, friends, you just, you know, uh, make out the, you know, difference, uh, the valve and the actuator. So, in this case, actuator also need to fireproof. What for? At least uh, we need to have 15 to 30 minute uh, operation. Uh, okay, right? This is in compliance to UL1709. Okay, friends, we'll move on. Then body color as per project specification. Yes, it is gray. Predominantly, it is gray. Okay, friends, I think we are done with body and shell. Okay, hopes, hope it is clear. Okay, then we move on to the actuator. Okay, very, very, very important part in motorized bar. Okay, friends, just listen carefully, watchful, be watchful because, you know, a lot of things, a uh, lot of new, new things uh, will be there, uh, which is unique to this type of uh, uh, yeah, motorized bag. Okay, friends? Right. So we'll go on with this. Of course, manufacturer, model number, specify VTA, motor type on power supply, specify VTA for motor type and power supply. Of course, 415 volt AC, 50 hertz, three phase and scheme detail and speed requirement, specify VTA. It has to come from the final sizing. Then insulation class, okay. Here also, I just want to highlight uh, what is the insulation class requirement, okay. So, of course, we need to specify VTA, but there are some, uh, you know, categorization is available uh, for this uh, insulation class, actually. Uh, for example, uh, friends, I uh, just want to, you know, uh, just share a, uh, um okay it depends on the temperature requirement okay for example uh, take a case uh, f uh, f means 155 degrees centigrade okay if it is y 90 degrees centigrade a means 105 degrees centigrade e means 120 degrees centigrade b b means 130 degrees centigrade H means 180 degrees centigrade. Okay. Above 180, we go with sickness, insulation. So this you remember. Huh? Okay. See, I'm not keying in all the data here, but you know, as a notes, I'm giving it. This will be very useful. Okay, friends. Just only my request is you watch the video throughout the session so that you will get to know all these uh, small, small things. Huh? Okay, friends. Okay. Then gear model and gear ratio, specify VT, of course, vendor need to, uh, you know, vendor need to uh, specify, okay. Then gear oil, oil uh, gearbox oil filling and drain flex requirement. And of course, the mechanical position. Yes, here we need actually both, okay. Spec you can specify both basically, okay, friends. Right. So then what else? Yeah, I think good to go. We'll go to the next slide. Again, actuator orientation and casing material. Yeah, of course, top orientation. And what is the casing material? Die cast aluminum with epoxy coating or as per your project requirement. Okay, friends. Then actuator color and IP rating. Okay, here, you know, actuator color should follow to them as per the project specification. For example, if it is paint close, the FC means red. Okay, friends. And if it is IP, uh, okay, uh, IP rating, we go with uh, 65 plus. Okay, minimum. Okay, friends. And here also on the actuator part, uh, I want to also tell you uh, some, I want to give you some notes also. Okay, for example, uh, 
uh, based on my experience, I'm telling. Of course, if it is red means um, a yeah, fail close, huh? fail close means we go with red. Actually, okay. If it is fail open, what is that? It is green. Okay. And if it is fail last, then we go with silver. Okay, but, okay, friends. I think it's clear. And also one thing, uh, one more thing I want to mention. Uh, we need to refer this, uh, we need to relate this color in line with the uh, Munchell, uh, Munchell, uh, Munchell number. For example, it is red means Munchell number is 7.5 or 3 uh, bar 12. Okay. If it is green means 2.5 G3 bar 8. Okay. If it is silver means 7.5 PB9 bar 2. Okay, friends, you just remember this. Then action on power failure. Of course, as per the project requirement, either fail open, fail close or fail last time. So in this also here, I just want to add on a few things. Huh? If you see the, you know, motorized uh, valve actually, uh, normally when there is a power failure, uh, it will go with the fail last time. It will stick to the last position. Okay. In case if the process requirements needs to close or open, then uh, we need to, you know, come out with the uh, alternate solution. Okay. Proposal. Okay, friends. Yeah. So I think this is also good to go. Power failure. Then handling location. Specify side mounting or in line with project spectrum. Then additional emergency power. Okay. If it is needed. Okay. Why I highlighted this, you know, here. Action and power failure. So in this case, uh, uh, we don't want to be, you know, uh, fail last actually. We want to uh, fail open or, or you want to fail close then in that case uh, uh, we need to actually consider this emergency power requirement friends okay that's a point I just want to you know uh, yeah stress on that okay so then few more things of course again uh, if you see the blue font this all add on okay this all add on just uh, you know uh, listen and learn what is what. Don't worry. Most of them are VTA vendor. Phase rotation protection and phase loss protection. Here, I think we need to specify a uh, uh, vendor only. Okay, friends. So here, uh, you may ask actually, what is this uh, phase uh, rotation protection? Okay. So it will prevent the valve actually from... Uh, uh, you know, uh, reversing the direction actually. So that's the intent of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, topic actually. I mean, not topic, rather it's a, it's a requirement actually. Okay, friends? Yeah. So what else? Uh, yeah, then next we'll move on to the next item. item. Uh, winding temperature and overload uh, rails and space heater requirement. Okay. Then specify again VTA, then full load current rating VTA, then average current and rated current VTA, then power rating and cost function. Okay, friends. Again, uh, here I just want to tell you something. Uh, you know, what is this cosine function? You know, this is related to the power rating, eh? uh, related to the parameters of the uh, electric actuator. Okay, friends. Of course, we need to get this from uh, our uh, uh, vendor only. But you just remember uh, what is this uh, cosine function. Okay. Okay. Then what else is there? We'll move on to the... Uh, electric protection on motor unit and also electric protection on the control part. Okay, both you specify as a VTA. Then mounting position on valve, of course, we need to specify VTA. Then electrical connection on motor unit, of course, this is also VTA. Okay, friends, these are all the additional add-on information, actually, I want to, you know, give you. Uh, so you don't worry, this most of the things are related to uh, vendor information. Okay, we can get it from vendor. Okay, then we we'll move on to the electrical connection on control unit. Yeah, we need to ask for the vendor. Then torque switch also vendor actuator nominal rated torque 
and actuated peak torque that is also when the actuator maximum operating opening torque and actuator coupling torque that also specify when the actuator final selected torque of course by vendor and allowable maximum stroking time we can give as per the project spec so in our case what i mentioned is 5 seconds per inch okay it should stroke within 5 seconds per inch so if it is 2 inch means 10 second okay friends like that we should actually get it okay then what else I think good to go. Yeah. So, yeah, again, opening time and closing time. This is uh, based on project requirement. Then, uh, control circuit power, uh, whether it's internally driven or external. So, that also we need to specify. And of course, we need always get from VTA, vendor, and rating also. Okay. And uh, pad lockable selector switches and push buttons. Uh. Of course, we need this. So, what we uh, what I suggest is you specify uh, uh, local of remote. Huh? This is for the uh, selector switch. Local, remote and off position. Okay, friends. Then, uh, you know, push button. Huh? Open, close, again, stop. This is all we know. You can specify. Okay. Then LCD display indication and LED status indication. Specify VTA or as per the project specification i think this is we should have it actually you know lcd display also should have and light indication also we should have okay few more on actuator very important external hardware position output and non volatile memory battery life yes external hardware position output is 420 milliamps and what is the maximum battery life we should ask 5 years is a minimum okay friends just listen that up huh? We should ask uh, five years as a minimum. Okay. Then what else? Yes, we'll move on to the next item. Key lockable transparent cover required. Yes, it is needed. And what is the failure action close? For example, what you can always specify as per the process requirements. Then travel limit stop. Yes, required in line with the project spec. Then remote control station. Okay. This is an add-on actually. If you want a remote control station, you can specify yes. Of course, it depends on the project specification. Then ESD command required and shift process safety time. Okay, here ESD command is required. Okay, yes, as per the process specification. Okay, friends. And what is the shift process safety time? That one you need to refer to the cell verification report so in this in that i just took it as a 40 seconds again don't worry what is cell classification what is cell verification all these don't worry that will be taken up as a separate video only thing is you need to keep watch my videos regularly okay friends thanks a lot okay then partial stroking a requirement that is also very important uh, you know, uh, requirement uh, uh, in the in the current context actually. Okay, right. So uh, here in this partial uh, uh, stroke testing, you can uh, specify as yes. Of course, this is in line with the uh, project uh, specification. Here also, I just want to add on some notes. Huh? Why actually we need this uh, partial stroke testing? Uh, we call this as a PSD. Okay. This is actually to reduce the valve stuck open problem with SIS valves. You know, this is actually to ensure that the valve is in good condition. Okay. So like every three months or every, you know, six months, we keep on, you know, checking like that. So that we ensure that the valve is, uh, you know, uh, in service and it is, you know, um, ready for the demand. Okay. That's the thing. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, typically uh, the process valve is moved to an intermediate position which does not uh, adversely affect the process operation. Then return to the normal pull position. Okay, how we can achieve this? For example, the uh, process is ongoing. So you need to, uh, you know, do this testing without interrupting the process. So how we can do this actually? 
So, for example, uh, we can say 10 to 15 percent. Okay, we can make a movement of 10 to 15 percent. Okay, meaning, meaning 85 percent valve will be open. 90 to 85 percent valve will be open so that there will not be any obstruction to the process. Okay, friends. Right. Then what else? Required seal rating, offered seal rating, all this we can take in the report, seal verification report. We can specify seal 1, 2, 3 based on the seal verification report. Okay. Then mean time between failure, mean time to repair, all these we can specify and get it from the read vendor. Okay. Then lifting hook. Okay. Specify as per the project requirements. Okay, friends. I think it's clear. I think we are done with the actuator part. Yes. Now, the additional add-on for the actuator. So, we have one more requirement, actuator fireproofing. Okay. Fireproofing, as I highlighted earlier, so it should be in line with the HSC requirement. Okay, friends. I think that is also good. And fireproofing standard UL1709 depends on the project spec. Okay. Then fireproofing method and fireproofing accessories. So specify VTA for fireproofing method and accessories we can specify SS316 in line with project specification. Okay, friends. Then nine, uh, yeah, fireproofing material, outer color and weatherproof design. Fireproofing material, outer color, you know, you need to follow the same as the actuator color. If you remember the previous slide, for actuator fail close, what we have chosen, red we have chosen. So that means here also the actuator, uh, yeah, uh, the fireproofing material also should be red. Okay. And weatherproof design, you need to, uh, you know, comply to the project spec. So this is the look and feel, uh, friends. So you can have a, you know, a, 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 what do you call, fireproofing like this. Huh? This is actually, I've given a SS, but some case, you know, uh, it will be like, a, you know, a, what do you call, a, a fireproof, a fireproof cloth, something like that. Okay, friends. I think this is also clear. Then we go to limit switch. Again, huh, this one you fill in only if applicable. Huh? Okay. So manufacturer model, specify VTA, type and quantity, specify VTA, contacts, of course, SPDT, single pole, double throw, or project requirements. Then switching position, uh, specify either close at valve open or close at valve close. Okay, friends. Then tag number as per p and ID or assign in line with project tagging convention. Quantity as per the p and ID. Of course, open close is two. Yeah, certification and IP rating as per project requirements. Okay. And IP rating, of course, could be IP 66 or 65 as a minimum. Certification depends on the project, uh, uh, you know, requirements. Uh, if you remember the previous slide, we talked about the hazardous classification, right? Yeah, EXD, EXIA, EXIB, all these. Uh, okay. Then electrical connection size, specify M20 or as per the project requirements. Uh, okay, friends. Yeah, I think this is also clear. Yeah, one more item. Housing material. So this one, as per the project specification, in this case, I just put 316 SS. Okay, friends. I think limit switch is good to go. So this is the look and feel of the limit switch with the open close indication. Okay. Then external setting tool. Huh? This is actually a different tool, actually. You know, this is a used for accessing the actuator for doing a calibration or you know for interfacing uh, for doing any kind of modification all these that's the intent actually so the uh, specify vta of course manufacturer and model then type actually it should be wireless and intrusive you'll be seeing the you know the picture here huh? just wait for a minute uh, the an electrical connection certification and battery rating here specify vta for both both they need to you know come out and housing material and ip rating of course as per the project requirement in this case i just put aluminium then intrinsic requirement yes okay this is the look and feel of this external setting tool uh, friends 
You can see here all these key operation. Using this, we can access the actuator and do all this kind of a modification, you know. Okay. So I think we are done with this uh, uh, external tool setting also. Then we'll move on to the communication and software. Communication type, of course, specify hot with standard analog signal or foundation field bus. Of course, it needs to be in line with the project spec. Then function blocks. Okay, friends, function blocks applicable for FF and FF card and SIL module. Specify VTA for both valve asset management software, uh, software make model and version. Yes, for both in line with the spec. Okay, the version and model will be given by vendor. Then compatibility with plan system, automation system. Yes, of course, but we have, we have to put it as VTA. Then last link acting scheduler capability applicable only for FF and DD revision and ITK interoperability test kit. Okay, so that is also applicable for FF. So we are done with this communication and software also friends. Hope it is clear. Then the purchase, of course, this is a very routine thing. Manufacturer. Oh, okay. There is something missed out here. I just, you know, apologize for this. I just put, you know, uh, uh, wrong information. Apologize for this. You just ignore it. Then model and serial number. You just start with this huh? model and serial number. Specify VTA. Requisition number, input the requisition references, and of course, purchase order number. Uh, yeah, input the PO references. So, again, I'm telling this uh, 150 the manufacturer, uh, we should put VTA actually. Uh, there is some um, uh, item, you know, uh, copied from the previous slide actually came in here. Okay, friend, sorry for that. We'll move on to the last topic, but not the least, which is special requirements. Okay, friends. There are a lot of special requirements. You pay attention to it because the more we request, the more we get it. Okay. First is material certificate. Okay. Then second is PMI report. Okay. Then NAS requirement. Okay. National Association for Corrosioner, Corrosion Engineers. Okay, friends. And EMC test report, hydrostatic pressure test report. Yes. Fail safe test report. Yes. Electromagnetic interference type report. Yes. Custom configuration report. Yes. Calibration test report. Yes. Electrical hazardous classification. Yes. Cryogenic test. Yes. Of course, it depends huh, on your requirement. Fujiti emission. Yes. Safety shield requirement. Yes. Fireproofing test report. Yes. Functional test report. Yes. Again, huh? This all, you know, depends on your project requirement. Third party SIL certificate, if it is applicable, okay? If it's under SIL category, okay? Failure mode effect and diagnostic analysis, yes. Functional safety manual, yes. Manufacturer nameplate for valve and actuator, yes. Tag plate, yes. Two years spare parts, yes. Very important. Documentation and update requirement, yes. Pre-inspection meeting, yes. Design review meeting, yes. FAT owner witness required, yes. Valve seat leakage test report as per APA 598 and STM E499. Yes. So here, all these uh, 25 items, I put it as yes, but you have to look into your project requirement. Okay, friends, I think we have come to the end of this data sheet preparation for motorized valve. Hope you had a very good insight. Thanks a lot for your time. Keep supporting me. Keep watching. Okay, friends. Thank you very much. And see you all with another interesting topic. There are many topics in progress. Like, for example, data sheet preparation for other field transmitters and control wall criteria, selection criteria, then motorized wall selection criteria. And, of course, the DCS side, control and automation side. So many things are in pipeline. So my only humble request is keep supporting me. Please spare some time to click on the subscribe button. Okay, friend, so that you will not miss any
future videos. Thanks again. This is Rambala signing off. See you friends. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.